Now you're here to see how to, how to frost seed switchgrass. And you know, like most ways there's, uh, there's a little gray area in there where, you know, we're doing it under pretty optimum conditions other than this hasn't been a food plot or an ag field. I want you to look at something. Of course, there's a deer trail right here. But as I come over here, just come out here in a little bit, and there's a lot of weeds in here, goldenrod, different types of forbs and forages. There's a lot, but when you come down here at boot level and you go to a spot like this, you give one kick and you can see the soil is right there. So the soil's there. When we put the seeds down on the ground, we're actually gonna get really good seed to soil contact. So the switchgrass seed, these tiny little seeds, and you can see how seed, small these seeds are in here seeds are very tiny very tiny switchgrass seeds and that means that these seeds can get down in the soil through a lot of different debris and grasses they'll get blown down in there and washed down in there under the soil so even in a field like this it's pretty trashy it's never been treated we can have a successful stand of switchgrass very fast we're gonna when we get out of here i'm gonna go buy a switchgrass field that we did the same tactic last year and show you what it looks like it looks really good now there's a couple different uh, seed types and you look at hard seed and dormant seed. We're using, uh, and soft seed, we're using Cave and Rock from Northwoods Whitetail. John's probably the premium supplier of switchgrass seed as far as getting good quality switchgrass feed that, seed that fits your area. There's shortages this year, so that's what's tough too. We're, we're fortunate to have some of this. And we have seed that happens to be about 50% hard seed. I'd say, I think 48% on the label. What that means is that seed has to go through a process called stratification. That means it has to go through numerous frosts and freezes, excessive rain for it to germinate. Now we're doing this on March 21st. We have lots of frost and freeze, lots of moisture rain coming ahead over the next couple months. This seed that we're putting in the ground right now of switchgrass is not going to germinate till mid, late May, even into early June, depending on how much moisture there is. So we have a long time for this seed to soak up moisture but also go through some frost and freezes, open up that seed and make it viable for germination this year. Now, if we were planting more with a drill, more May, uh, late April even, and then we've planted successfully switchgrass, one of our best fields here that was planted first two years ago, it's had two growing seasons, that was planted late June with excessive rain in the, in the forecast and it was soft seed. So we got a great catch that year. It was three feet tall. Now it's five or six feet tall. And this year it'll be seven, eight feet tall with that third growing season. So those are different seed types. As far as hard seed, soft seed, you want to plant that soft seed that's viable for germination right away and available as it gets closer to late April, May, June. But we can take advantage of frost seeding right now because we are getting a lot of frost and freeze with hard seed. So we're gonna do that. Now the first step, which we already did, and I'm actually applying Simazine to all my old switchgrass areas, all my new in both Wisconsin and Minnesota to take care of any weeds that are in there and get, help us get a fresh stand. Once this frost seeding, and once the frost seeding germinates a switchgrass, is a viable crop as long as we're putting it in with chemicals we're taking care of our weeds we mow when needed which we'll talk about in a second here then we're going to have a great highly predictable stand that will last for decades to come we could actually use herbicide on it again simazine before spring green up in follow-up years if we have a weed problem but we can also mow and so we had some of our fields we mowed twice last year some once the one that we're going to show you here that was planted last year in a junky situation like this we just had to mow once and we did very well with it. We have another power line area that was actually mowed and then planted. It was mowed because they were clearing the power lines, but no dirt work, nothing of any kind, no uh, tilling, disking, plowing. The one that we planted two years ago first that we'll show you, that's really high right now, that was actually an old food plot bean. So that was a really good uh, soil exposure and um, weed control process that went into that before we actually put it on the ground late June. So this one right now, March 21st, the most important thing we did, which we already did, we just did it now, was spraying Simazine at three quarts per acre. Simazine is a pre-emergent. That'll take care of a portion of the broadleafs in here and some of the weeds so that we have a chance for this switchgrass to actually take hold. Then we're putting the switchgrass down. So on all, we're doing this for illustration purposes. The only difference is this weekend is when I'd actually frost seed the rest of my switch and we're getting all our spraying done first because once spring green up has taken place, which when we're getting 60 degree days, 50 degree days, we have 
even if we're getting temperatures in the 20s at night and then back up to 40s, 50s, 60s, we're gonna get green popping in the woods here really fast. And at that point, the simazine is ineffective because it's a pre-emergent, it kills weeds before they come. It will not kill the switchgrass. So I could have put the switchgrass down first and then sprayed. It's just the timing and priority. We need to get the simazine on the ground first. We have a lot more time to get this frost seeded than we do sprayed because spring green up is right around the corner. Once spring, spring green up takes place, we put the simazine down three quarts per acre, we've sprayed that, and then we've spread our switchgrass. And the switchgrass, I'm using Earthway model 2750. I'm going at walking speed, and I'm setting it at setting 1.5. 1.5 is where you stick this lever on top of. It's at 1.5, and that's approximately 8 to 10 pounds per acre, which is the catch you want to have. In the old days, people talked about, oh, we want five, six pounds for bedding, 10 pounds for screening. But let's face it, deer don't bed and switch. If it's open enough and it has forbs and forages inside the switch, then that means it's not a viable stand for cover and actually holding up to the harsh falls and winters that we have in the upper portion of the country. So we wanna put in eight to 10 pounds per acre, make it thick, that's providing a great screen. And in this area right here, just for the strategy, we're going to have a water hole right down here and then this cross is a ditch it's on a really good ditch crossing very steep ditch crossing we're gonna have a cornfield of about an acre through these trees up into a field that'll be new this year it's actually worse than this as far as trashy and weedy and then we have a stand around the corner for a different wind on the other side of this crossing about 100 yards past the corn so these stands are about 200 yards apart straight as a crow flies and that one is used for different winds and it's in between bedding and corn. This one is in between the ditch crossing corn, water hole, and then bedding out on this point. So that's a strategy why we're putting this in here. We wanna be able to walk past this area and not spook any deer that are back here. That means that on both sides of the trail, where the Kubota is at right now, that'll all be switchgrass too, because I wanna be able to go through here in a tunnel on the top side or middle and get back and forth through here without spooking deer. Switchgrass on the ground, setting 1.5, that's eight to 10 pounds per acre through an Earthway model 2750. I use this not because I've sponsored by it, but I've used them for a long time. I don't know if it's 20 years. Going back to a cloth bag spreader that was really hard to fill. These are vinyl and they stand up a little bit. It's kind of a throwaway spreader, meaning you spend 40, $50 on it, depending on if you find them on sale, if you buy two together like we do. And, uh, but I've spread 7,000 pounds through it in one year. So they last quite a while and they're very even, they're smooth when you spin it. So it doesn't have any herky jerky. They are very dependable for a time. Eventually they're corroded by fertilizer, lime, whatever you put through there, but they're a great, great even distributor of seed and I've gotten really used to them over the year. Plus I'm seeding a lot by myself. I can put this on the ground, the vinyl stands up and I can pour the seed and it makes it a lot easier. So simazine, switch grass, we spread that on here. Now spring green up takes place. Right now, again, it's March 21st. I would imagine by middle of April, third week of April, at the latest May, we're gonna have weeds in here that are then eight, 10, 12 inches high. That's a perfect time to come in here and we'll spray one pint per acre of 2,4-D, two quarts per acre of glyphosate. Now don't think that you're gonna have to do this every year. We're putting heavy chemicals on this to begin with because we wanna make sure we don't have a weed problem going forward and we get a good stand that lasts for 20 years or more. So I'm putting 2,4-D Roundup in here, glyphosate, two quarts per acre glyphosate, again, one pint per acre of 2,4-D. You can mix those two together. You wanna to do that when it's a day like today, 55 degrees, beautiful and sunny. Weeds will be growing aggressively at that time. You wanna do it when it's a snow flurry, when it's cold snap. You wanna do it when it warms up and the weeds then will be growing aggressively. The faster they're growing, the easier they are to kill. With the Simazine and then the 2,4-D and Roundup, the 2,4-D and Roundup is more of a priority than the Simazine. So if you miss the Simazine spraying, you can still get a decent catch with the 2,4-D and Roundup. But bottom line is, we'll get a great elimination of weeds with this process. Now, most of the time, there's an expo exponential amount of growth with switchgrass, meaning that you go through June, it might be a couple inches high at the end of June, by the end of July, it's six or seven inches high. And by the end of August, it's about 40 inches high, three feet, four feet plus, depending on the area. And we want to mow this. If there's weeds, weed concerns, we're not going to mow this right now, but we're going to mow this right before it takes that exponential leap of growth. That way the switchgrass will grow faster than any of the weeds that are here. 
you know, we'll get a great stand of switchgrass. It's weed free going into the fall. If we notice some weeds in here at all going into the spring, then we'll spray Simazine again before spring green up the second year of growth, which be next year. And then we'll also watch it for weeds to mow during the summertime. So we can mow in May the second year, June, July, you can mow once each month to eliminate that weed competition. And then you can eventually let it go. The plot that we're gonna show you back here, the area of switch, it's about the similar size. We're going to spray Simazine on, I already did. And then I'm gonna play it on mowing in May and then I'm letting it go. I fully expect that to be six foot plus by the end of the year. And that's just in the second year of growth. You have to follow the steps. You have to make sure that the Simazine, the 2,4-D and Roundup, the mowing, you plan on taking care of it. You take care of the switch initially in these first couple years, and it's gonna take care of you for many, many years to come. Again, we're using this for quite a few strategies. And I'll mention, the reason we use this heavy switch is we can count on deer bet, not betting in it. Deer need browse two times during their bedding hours, and then right before dark, a half hour, hour before dark, that's when they hit their major food source. If we have solid switch, we don't want deer bedding in here. This is an area where we can access a tree stand right down here in an oak tree. We can walk by here. We're not spooking deer on the inside. It, it effectively covers us up. So a really good opportunity to plant a bank of solid switch grass that doesn't invite deer bedding, and it gives us the opportunity to get on and off our parcel with a lot greater ease. Now, this is just one small area. I'm going to estimate that this is not even a quarter acre. Uh, maybe a fifth of an acre at the most. You could even say it's closer to an eighth of an acre. Bottom line is we have about in total with the plantings this year, we'll go from nine to then 12 acres of switchgrass. We have great opportunity and all our field edge on our property to put banks of switchgrass that are 10, 12 feet wide, up to 30, 40 feet wide to make sure we're not spooking the deer on the inside of the woods. So. Frosty and switchgrass is very easy, but you have to follow the steps. You know, sometimes you can get a, another spraying of Roundup before the switchgrass actually germinates. The problem with that is if we have a quick spring and you don't notice the germination of the switchgrass down below, it can only be an eighth inch high sometimes, a very small leaf, then what we're gonna find is that, that you kill, and you get a kill on that switchgrass and you ruin your stand, of course. So follow these steps, you'll get a great stand, and I look forward to hearing about it in the comments. This is a foolproof way to get switchgrass established this year for great growth this year and next year and beyond. Folks, I wanna make sure you check out my web class video series, whether it's how to design your food plot program or how to design your property in general. And we have a new one coming out that'll be how to hunt the rut. But these bucks back here are testament. Some of these bucks go back to 93. They're even in different states. I urge you to check out those web classes that you can help yourself, help your land, help your hunt. The link is in the description. And also for those that have tried them out, I encourage you to offer some feedback in the comments below. Thank you.